Hello everybody, Phantom Zawai here, and today we're going to be doing something a little different. Um, I know I've got series already running, uh, and this is not me abandoning them, but I've been a little sick recently, and so I found myself with a little more time, and uh, today I picked up Danganronpa, a game I've heard a lot about. You know, kind of a non-traditional, but still sort of visual novel style game. So I wanted to play it on the channel, or at least this is not necessarily going to be a series. But I wanted to, uh, I wanted to play it blind, and I figured why not record it, since I enjoy doing that kind of let's play more than any other, really. Um, so, yeah, why not, basically, <laughs> is kind of the, the whole thing behind this. Uh, I apologize, my throat might sound uh, a little terrible, I might have to pause a few times for coughing, because I still am a little sick, but uh, we're going to give this a shot at least. Let me guys, uh, if you guys will let me know what you think in the comments of this whole series, potential of a series, or, uh, you know, whether or not it fits, I would appreciate it. But let's get started. Oh. I played about the first, uh, I want to say 10 minutes of the game, just to see kind of what it was. So I have seen this, but I have no idea what's going on. So we have a, a bear, looks like a classroom behind him, he's got him in some kind of chamber that's a rocket, and they blast off. Drilling through what I assume is the school, into the stars, and down they go. and rock it right back down. I have no freaking clue what's supposed to be happening here. Goodbye, person. Hello, evil bear thing. According to the, uh, the little title song, I believe his name is Monokuma, the bear. This is completely blind. Just full disclosure, I have no idea what's going on. Uh, like I said, I did play the first 10 minutes, so I have seen this part here. But let's get started. The massive high school towers over all other buildings in this bustling ur urban area. It's like the school stands at the center of the entire world. Hope's Peak Academy. It brings in top students from every field imaginable. A government-funded school of privilege. They say that if you come here and manage to graduate, you'll be set for life. With hundreds of years of tradition, it sends in the cream of the crop into the workforce every year. It was built to raise hope in the nation's future, which makes Hope's Peak a pretty fitting name. There are two things you need to attend this school. One, you have to already be attending high school. Two, you have to be the very best at what you do. No ordinary student could enroll here. The only way to, uh, the only way in is if you're scouted by the school itself. And standing there at the gate of the ultimate school filled with the ultimate students was me. As you can see, I'm nothing but a hopelessly average high school student. Average on the outside, average on the inside. I really don't have much going for me when it comes to grades, special abilities, or even personality. I mean, yeah, I have hobbies and stuff I like to do, but it's not like I'm a psychic or mutant or whatever. Like if you asked me what my favorite song was, or my favorite movie or TV show. They'd all just be whatever's most popular at that particular moment. Even among the average, I'm your completely... Or rather, I'm completely average, so I can't even say I'm your everyday hero type. That's just who I am. Anyway, I figure it's always good to introduce yourself right off the bat. Whoever I'm talking to. But you know, if I have any kind of strong point, so to speak, I'd say I'm a little more gung-ho than other people. I mean, look at me. I'm completely ordinary, but still. Here I am, standing in front of the anything-but-ordinary Hope's Peak Academy. 
I still can't believe I'm standing here. I wonder if someone like me can survive a place like this. It's got this overwhelming presence, like it's trying to swallow me whole. But it's no wonder I would feel that way. What you have to understand is... Well, let me just tell you about the preparation I did last night to get ready for today. Okay, so I'm going to read this little background uh, monitor we have here before we move uh, on with the dialogue. Anonymous! Come on, keep it coming. Apparently my friend kind of thro- uh, kind of knows them. I guess everything there is state of the art. Different Anonymous says, This year's ultimate pop sensation is going to be there. Yeah, the ultimate baseball pro is going to be there too. So jealous. It's only for winners. How can anyone even get in? Anyone can't. Alright. So even more uh, alluding to how incredible this school is. Hope's Peak only invites those students who are truly elite in their field. It's such a popular topic. There are threads online dedicated to talking about the school's attendees. So to prepare, I looked up some of those threads. And all I saw was talk about ultimate students who are way beyond your average high schooler. For example, one incoming student is the ultimate pop sensation. I guess she's a high school girl who's also the lead singer for a pop group famous all over the country. There's also the ultimate baseball star. I love all this bolded text like Nintendo, <coughs> excuse me, Nintendo style. He was the cleanup hitter for the national high school chump. <laughs> I must call them high school chumps. Champs. Pro teams already have their eyes on him. Then there's the ultimate fashionista. Fashionista? Fashionista? I actually have no idea how you're supposed to truly pronounce that. Fashionista? Eh. She's been on the cover of tons of fashion magazines. She's what every high school girl wants to be. That's not stereotyping at all. Oh, and they mentioned the ultimate biker gang leader, too. Wow. The scary thing is, he's the de facto leader of every biker gang in Japan. Gangs everywhere love the guy. And apparently he attends school. For some reason. On top of that, there's the ultimate martial artist. The ultimate fanfic creator. The ultimate gambler. Ultimate swimming pro. Ultimate programmer. Ultimate clairvoyant. And then some. Reading that made me realize how truly, totally powerless, rather, I was. It was the country's finest, top to bottom. Okay, now this is basically where I stopped. I basically hadn't read anything beyond the ultimate biker or gang leader. So this is all new to me from here on. I felt like a tame little house cat who'd wandered into a pride of lions. But still, there was something I couldn't stop thinking about. You see... There were a few students who I couldn't find any info on, no matter how much I looked. With all those ultimate students, I'm the only one without any kind of worthwhile talent. But then, what about those other new students who didn't seem to pop up anywhere? Could they be just average students like me, without any talent or anything? That thought was kind of encouraging. I mean, I know I don't have much in the way of personality. But beyond that, there's an even bigger issue. How did such an unbelievably average student like me get picked to come to this ultimate high school? I mean, I guess there is a reason. You just have to take one glance at the acceptance letter to, uh, they sent me to see why. Okay. We recently held a lottery to select one ordinary student to attend our school. Wow, that's not at all condescending. As a result, you have been selected, and we invite you to join us as the ultimate lucky students. <laughs> They actually have titles for this. It's not just the title that Makoto is giving them. <laughs> He's going to be known as the ultimate lucky student. Oh, that's funny. Included is an orientation guide for Hope's Peak Academy. Okay. We recently had a lottery. Okay, so he's just going to read it again. Yeah. They spelled it out plain as day. I got invited by pure luck. Or, I'm sorry, pure luck. Honestly, I probably would have been better off just declining their offer. But after hearing how graduating was a guarantee or a guarantee for success later in life, I couldn't just say no. But then, actually standing there in front of the school, I started to feel lost, like I didn't belong there. I could feel myself losing my nerve. 
but still, I can't just stand here in front of the gate forever. Frozen in place, murmuring to myself, I looked down at the acceptance letter, letter even uh, clutched in my hand. It said there'd be a meeting for all incoming students in the main hall at 8 a.m. I'm gonna stop that overly, uh, <laughs> just rambunctious voice for the bold text. I imagine that's already probably gotten kind of old. The meeting's still not for a uh, little while, but I should probably just head in. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. I gathered up all my determination and tried to act like I'd done this a million times before. And I took my first step towards the main hall. This is where we're supposed to meet, right? I guess I'm the first one here. There's a really elegant clock over in the corner. It says it's 7.10 a.m. The meeting doesn't start until 8 o'clock, so there's still a full 50 minutes left. It makes sense nobody else would be here yet. I was so wound up, I got here way too early. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have plenty of time before the meeting. Just standing around waiting isn't exactly... I should take a look around the school. Maybe that'll help me calm down a little. I am a student here now, so they shouldn't be there shouldn't be any problem with me having a look around, right? It'll help me kill some time, if nothing else. Trying to play it cool, I took my first step into Hope's Peak Academy. It was also my first step towards starting a new life at a new school. At least, that's what I was hoping for. What the... But the instant I took that first step forward, my view became warped, twisted. It was like some kind of delusion, melting away and mixing together into something else. Spinning, mixing, melting, melting away, then spinning again. And the next moment, everything went black. That was how it all began, and how life as I knew it came to an end. At that point, I should have realized the reason I was brought to Hope's Keep... Uh, Peak Academy wasn't because I had ultimate good luck. It was so I could experience ultimate despair. Oh, oh shit, okay. <laughs> the tone has changed. Welcome to Despair. Prologue. To Despair High School. That Yeah, that's very inviting. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to save. Why not? Alright. Hey, we got a uh, slightly more stylish UI here. And I did turn it on Japanese just because a friend of mine who'd played it said that he thought the English dub was, you know, kind of middling. Like, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. So I figured, you know, that and along with my channel, I'm always playing Japanese games anyway. Uh, you know, with Japanese dialogue, so might as well just stick to the Japanese voices. <sighs> what? Where am I? I woke up with my head resting on top of a hard wooden desk. My body feels heavy. It's pretty normal for me to sunk off in the middle of some boring class or whatever, but what was I doing asleep here just now? This isn't a classroom I've ever been in before. What the heck is going on? Ooh, stylish. The art in this game seems amazing. The presentation is fantastic. Welcome to Hope Peak Academy. First, we'd like to explain the basic controls. Good, I could use that. You can use the mouse to adjust your aim. Okay, my aim. If you aim at an object you can interact with, you can press the left mouse button. And presto, you'll investigate that object. Use the WASTA buttons to adjust your viewpoint. Or you can press and hold the right mouse button and move the mouse around. Why don't you try looking around the classroom? Okay. Ooh. Nifty. Uh, let's examine this board. No. How about the monitor? No. Oh, I can't. There's a TV. The school is funded by the national government, so I guess it's not that weird to have TVs in here. Something feels off. I wonder what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I am inclined to agree. So I'm moving with the mouse right now, uh, just because it just seems more convenient right now. But there's a note. 
That's the desk I fell asleep on. I can see a line of drool I must have left there. I'll have to clean that up later. Hey, what's on the, that on the desk? This looks like it says, Hey there, new kid. The next semester is about to start. Starting today, this school will be your entire world. Alright. An orientation guide? It's some kind of cheap-looking pamphlet, and there's something handwritten on it. Next semester's about to start, blah blah blah, our entire world. What the hell? Is this someone's idea of a joke? Yeah, that's pretty foreboding, I'd say. Okay, so that means I can't go any further when that camera pops up. What time is it? I cannot read it. Jeez, I can't believe it's already 8 o'clock. It was just after 7 when I first got here. Has it really been almost an hour since then? Does it say anything new if I look at it again? Okay, no. Same thing. Let's go ahead. Um... I do know from talking to a few friends there's like some sort of like trial system in this game. But that's really all I know. Um, like I did not know we were going to get transported to some like, it seems like it's an extra dimensional school building or something. I don't really know, but... For full disclosure, okay that's the same note, yeah. Um, is there anything over here? What the heck? In any normal classroom, that's where a window would be. But it looks like some kind of metal plate has been bolted over it. If I were to knock on it... Yep, definitely metal. Thick too. Very solid. Wait, that's not what matters here. More importantly, why are there metal plates over the windows? Okay, let's see. So what might have happened is... I got myself so wound up, I passed out in the main hall. Then someone carried me here? If that's true, it must mean... This is a classroom inside Hope's Peak. But then if that's true... That just raises more questions. This is all really strange. I mean, those metal plates covering the windows. It's like it's a prison or something. None of this makes any sense. I should probably head back to the main hall. It's already past the meeting time. There might be other students there now. You can leave the classroom by pressing the R key. Okay. I'm gonna look at this camera. Is that a surveillance camera? It's a dangerous world we live in. I guess they have these uh, to keep weirdos from just wandering in. Can't read that. Um, I do think that's all I can see in here, really. There's nothing that seems obvious I can look at, at least. Okay, so let's just leave the room. Leave the area? Yes. <clears throat> I'm going to miss stuff, by the way. If you're an expert of the game, uh, just, you know, again, realize I'm just kind of playing through this sight unseen. Jeez, this hallway is kind of weird, too. This is getting stranger by the second. I honestly have no idea what's going on. Well, for now, I'll just head to the main hall. Use the Wasta keys to move through the hallway, hold down the shift key while moving to run. Okay, we have a map. You can also press the tab key to bring up a map. Press the tab key again to close the map. How convenient! Okay. Is this the classroom I was just in? It'd have to be, right? Room 1B. The door's locked tight. In? Huh. I've... I mean, it's, I can see it's a bear icon for, uh, I guess, Monokuma. I wonder what the red door leads, uh, where it leads. I'm starting to feel sick standing here. Okay, then we have some kind of boom box. The AV room, okay. That's a yin sign, right? I have no idea what this is supposed to be. Like, exit? Okay, that is the way to the main hall. I doubt there's anything to find, anyway. By the time I got back to the main hall, everyone else was already there. Are you 
そう君たちもなうん今日希望が峰学園に入学する予定の新入生だよ Those are some unique looking kids これで15人ですか。キリがいいし、<笑>これで揃いましたかね。Standing before me were the ultimate students that had been handpicked by the school. I looked around at everyone who'd gathered there, taking in their faces one at a time. Maybe I was just imagining it, but I swear I could feel a kind of aura coming off of each of them. <laughs> wow! It's so stylish, man. Um, how's it going? My name is Makoto Naegi. Naegi? Naegi? Sorry I'm late. A bunch of stuff happened, then all of a sudden I was just asleep. Huh? Hmm. Okay, so they're not gonna talk now. Things just keep getting curiouser and curiouser. So strange. I declare beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is a strange situation indeed. Um, what are you talking about? I honestly have no idea what's going on right now. Just a moment. There's something else we must address. Makoto! Your tardiness is unacceptable. Surely you were here when the meeting was to start at 8, 8 a.m. sharp. Sharp, rather. <laughs> you were aware, rather. To be late on your first day is unspeakable. I must report you. And then you must accept your due punishment. Huh? What is your problem? It's not like he wanted to be late. He didn't have any control over it. Soda. Everyone just calm down. Listen, why don't we all go around and introduce ourselves? Huh? The hell? Now's no friggin' time for introdu introductions, or no time for friggin' introdu introdu <laughs> introductions. Oh. Uh, I can't do it. Maybe, but it may be a good... May be good to at least find out who we all are before digging into the bigger problems here. I mean, how are we supposed to even talk to each other if we don't know each other's names? That's a good point. Okay, so let's get the introductions out of the way. Then we can move on to whatever else. Sound good? I'm still totally lost, but I think it's better to just focus on getting to know each other for now. So I guess this is as good a chance as I'm going to get. I already looked everyone up on that Hoax Peak Academy thread online, but I still don't really know what kind of people they actually are. Time to find out. I'll start by talking to those five over there. Aim at a student, and then press the left mouse button to talk to them. Each conversation is important to the overall story, so keep track of how they go. Oh man. Okay. This is terrible. <laughs> because my memory is awful. Um. Okay, first let's talk to the, you know, kind of the soldier-looking dude. Ishimaru Kiyotaka. Ryuu's name is Shizuzu Gouken. Okay, let's talk to the soldier-looking dude. He sounds much more amiable than he kind of looks in his picture. Ultimate moral compass. <laughs> so that's Kiyotaka, according to what I saw about him on that, that thread. <clears throat> Excuse me. The cold is kind of getting to me a little bit now. He went to a famous private school and won top honors every year. He's basically a flawless honor student. He's also known for the work he's done with his community's public morals committee. Uh, sorry, I need a drink. They say he respects rules above all else, earning him the title of ultimate moral compass. Okay, so he is the lawful... Well, I guess I shouldn't say lawful good, but... If this were a D&D &D campaign, he would be lawful something. Probably lawful neutral, if I had to guess. Anyway, you can call me Taka. You said your name was Makoto Naegi, right? That's a good name. A strong name. You should thank your parents for giving you such an excellent name. <clears throat> and to keep that name from losing its value, you must devote yourself every single day. Life is worth putting every ounce of effort into it, right? Right! This guy is kind of annoying. <laughs> oh, okay. Yikes. Okay, so she's a little self-depreciating, probably. So her name is Toko. 
Toko Fukawa. I'm gonna try to remember the names, but I'm awful with names even in real life. <laughs> so, no promises. Okay. Ultimate Writing Prodigy. Yeah, she wrote a novel back when she was 10 that got everyone talking and launched her literary career. And then two years ago, she released So Lingers the Ocean, a love story said to be her masterpiece. The book was such a hit with women that fishermen quickly shot uh, to the top of the hottest men pole. The fishermen quickly shot? Okay, I guess the main character was a fisherman. <laughs> Despite her age, she's won countless literary prizes, and all her book books are instant belt best sellers even, men. Which is why she's come to be known as the ultimate writing prodigy. What else would you call such a young and talented author? But I figured she'd be a lovey-dovey type, what with her masterpiece being a romance and all. <laughs> That's some face, man. What? It's not polite to stare, you know. Oh, Jesus Christ. Stop staring at me like I'm some filthy creature. Filthy creature? No, I just thought... I, I know what you just thought. You just thought you've never seen such an ugly woman. You just th thought it was so funny. No, that's not what I was thinking at all. <laughs> I know it's true. Otherwise, you... I know you can't stand looking at me. Whatever. I really don't care. I'm used to it. Wow. Talk about an inferiority complex. I was way off about what a successful author would be like. Okay, so she's a little nuts, but then again, everyone's kind of nuts, it seems like. So, uh, you know, geniuses, but eccentric. Okay, so Sayaka. The way she moves is positively mesmerizing. In the pleasant sense, I can't quite place. Sayaka Maizono. When I saw her name that thread online, frankly, I was pretty surprised. Oh, she's the pop idol. She's in a pop idol group famous across the country. In fact, she's the lead, uh, their lead singer. As the ultimate pop sensation, she's in high demand to appear on TV and in magazines everywhere. But actually, that's not the only reason that I was uh, so surprised to find out she'd be going to this school. I'm sure she doesn't remember, but... Oh, childhood friend? <laughs> well, never mind. No matter how you slice it, she is really beautiful. Almost like a doll or something. I'm not a doll, you know? I'm alive! Huh? Did you hear me? Okay, so she's the sort of Esper character, I'm assuming. Well, she just came out and said it. She's psychic. Huh? <laughs> Kidding. I just have really good intuition, I'm sure. She's a sharp one. Hey, by any chance... Now what? Yeah, it must be. I'm sure of it. Hey, Makoto, did... Jeez, you guys. How long do you plan to waste our valuable time with this ridiculous back and forth? Sorry, just got carried away, I guess. Self-introductions are for introducing yourself, not bubbling through a bunch of idle chit-chat. You're right. Sorry, Makoto. We can talk about this later. It sounded like Sayaka really had something she wanted to say. But it's not like we'll never see each other again. Like she said, we can talk later. Okay, so if we get a chance to talk to them another time... I'm gonna try to remember to talk to Sayaka first, assuming that... I'm assuming that this game basically is going to... Like I said, every conversation is important, so I'm assuming keeping track of if someone wants to speak to you further is going to be important, so... Yo! Yeah, okay, he covered it way better than I could. <coughs> Excuse me. The ultimate baseball superstar, that's him. I recognize that name. Wow, that is some face, man. He played for the National High School Champs as their cleanup hitter, the ultimate baseball star. 
and that superb athletic specimen is... You? Seriously? Huh? Well, what's wrong? Nothing. I'm just surprised. I figured with you being the ultimate baseball star and all... Yeah. What, were you expecting some kid with a shaved head? Shaved head? No, I was just expecting more of a, you know, sporty-looking traditional baseball player type. Okay, so that was just his assumption of what he'd look like. I mean, when I found that article and picture of you online, that's how you look then. Okay, so that wasn't. Yeah! What? Oh man, you found that picture of me playing baseball? Seriously? I hate that picture. This is not cool. This is so not cool. Seriously, it's like I'm like mega embarrassed right now. I didn't have a choice, okay? Shaving your head like that is part of the national championship regulations. But now I refuse to cut my hair, and I'm not gonna dye it back to normal either. Actually, can I be totally honest with you? I don't like baseball, like at all. I've never gone to a single practice. <laughs> He's never practiced and he was still his team's star player? He's some kind of prodigy. prodigy. And as soon as I got accepted here, I quit baseball for good. I have my own dream for the future. A dream for the future? <laughs> my only path in life is getting into music. You could feel that star quality aura I have, right? I'm gonna be a singer. So all I need is a songwriter and someone on guitar. And we're set. This new version of me that's chasing after my dream is like super cool to the max. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I never imagined I'd hear something like that from a baseball all-star. Alright, and uh... Because that guy's name is Leon. And we got Hifumi. Ultimate fanfic creator. Okay. If there was a most likely title for Phantoms Y to be, I guess it would be this guy. Because <laughs> this is like the loser title, right? By the way, how much do you know about the world of 2D art? World of 2D? <laughs> well, in that world, I am well known and supremely well regarded as the ultimate fanfic creator. Mm -hmm. I once sold 10,000 copies of my fan comics at a school festival. The event has passed into legend. <laughs> Some of them didn't get it, of course, saying I tainted the event. How stupid can you be? That's too bad about them, but selling 10,000 copies like that is definitely pretty remarkable. The words of such idiots mean nothing to me. I am like Van Gogh, utterly unappreciated in my time. I'm a soldier serving night and day to destroy all mindless preconceptions about fan fiction. I'm sure if you were to observe my work, Mr. Nayagi, you would comprehend its greatness immediately. For my work is filled with the deepest meaning. What, uh, what kind of meaning? It's about embracing our basest urges. I don't think I want to comprehend it. Okay. Okay, now to talk to those five people over there. Okay, actually was hoping to end this episode in about half an hour, but I don't think this game even has a way of saving between chapters, which <clears throat> is a little inconvenient for me, honestly. Uh, but, hey, I guess this chapter is going to keep going for now, so... This episode is going to be a lot longer than I expected. Hope you guys don't mind. I like her already. Ultimate Swimming Pro. She's Aoi. Aoi Asahina. She's been breaking records in every competition she's been in since, ele since elementary school. She's even been chosen as an upcoming Olympic candidate. Uh, cadet, rather, not candidate. She is, without a doubt, the ultimate swimming, swimming pro. The combination of her ability, appearance, and, um, proportions has been widely discussed online. Yeah, the important stuff. So, uh, what was your name again? Sorry, totally forgot. Makoto Naegi. Oh yeah, I knew it was something like that. It, no, it's not something like that. It is that. Sure, sure, got it. 
Here, I'll hammer it onto my brain right now. Uh. Makoto Naegi. Makoto Naegi. She just kept repeating my name and moving her finger across her palm like she was writing something. What are you doing? You don't know? If you want to remember someone's name, you gotta write it on your hand three times. I've never heard that before in my life. Hey, by the way, how do you spell your last name? You spell it exactly like it sounds. Um... Well, I have no idea. <laughs> I'll just figure it out later and write it down. Anyway, glad to meet you. Sure, same here. Well, one thing I learned, she's totally easygoing and bursting with energy. I'm into it. Uh, okay, so here we have Chihiro. Ultimate Programmer. Sorry, I get kind of embarrassed whenever I introduce myself like this. Anyway, I hope we can get along. Same here. Nice to meet you. Huh? Maybe it's just my imagination, but have we met before? Um, I don't think so. We just met for the first time, which is why I said nice to meet you. Oh yeah, good point. Sorry. You don't have to apologize for that. Oh yeah. Chihiro Fujisaki is known for all the cutting-edge programs she's created. She's the ultimate programmer. She's also got that timid little bunny type thing going, which has endeared her to a legion of fans. Of course. Hey, so listen. I I'm really sorry. What are you apologizing for now? Well, because you seem upset. You must be mad at me, right? No, not at all. I was just lost in thought about something. Huh, lost in thought? Yeah, it had nothing to do with me being upset or anything. Oh, that's good. I was afraid maybe you didn't like me. Hehe, <laughs> I'm glad. I'm sorry to understand why her fans are so into her. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, here we've got Kyoko. Click. Okay, so she's the cool, silent type. Um, can I ask your name? Ultimate... Bleh? She's pretty tight-lipped, huh? Uh, oh, but you know, her name didn't show up anywhere in that Hope's Peak Academy thread. And I did see that student there were students like me, ones who didn't have any identity or presence. Could this girl be one of them? Um, so, what are you doing at the school? None. What's that supposed to mean? No, I meant, I just meant, getting invited here means you're some kind of ultimate something, right? So what ultimate something are you? Huh? Well, I guess you don't have to tell me. <sighs> no, I don't have to tell you, so I'm not going to. Nothing about her turned up online, so I was thinking maybe she got picked up by chance like me, but... Her face is like an iron mask. If she doesn't want to tell me anything... Uh, anything, no point in asking. Okay, so... <laughs> there's that! Uh, and then we have Junko. She's the ult... Yeah, she's like the ultimate fashionista, right? Junko Enoshima. Charmed, I'm sure. That's quite a smile she's got. Yep, that's her. Anybody would recognize this one. She's got more charm and presence than any high school girl in the country. She's the ultimate fashionista. Fashionista? Eh, I don't know. I've seen her on tons of magazine covers, but, covers, but I feel like that doesn't quite match up to reality. Oh, were you talking about my cover photos and junk? <laughs> well, of course! Those are totally photoshopped! Photoshopped? Yeah, you know, edited to, edited to hell and back. Like with computers and junk? Oh, so they aren't real. Come on, don't act so surprised. You're gonna make me all depressed. It's totally normal these days to photoshop the crap out of cover photos. If you're surprised by that, you'd be totally blown away by a certain dangerous little diva of ours. <laughs> they make the eyes and junk super big and tweak the skin so it looks all ceramic and porcelain. 
Oh. So many dreams are getting crushed today. Oh, man. Then there's this guy who reminds me of Kuwabara from Yu Yu Hakusho. Nice to fucking meet you. Yeah, me too. So he's the biker, ultimate biker leader, right? Yep, that's him. Mondo. Mondo Awan. Uh, Awan. Yeah, Awada. <laughs> Which means... He's the current leader of the largest biker gang in Japan. He's earned the respect, even awe, from every gang in the country. He's the ultimate biker gang leader. <laughs> oh, that title. Um... Nice to meet you, too. Oh. Hell yeah. I better be careful around him. One wrong word and I could wake up at the bottom of the sea. Those four over there are the only ones left. So this- holy shit! He's wearing a skirt! <laughs> Alright! <clears throat> Sakura Ogami. Um... Alright. So let's start with him. Ogami Sakura. Ultimate martial artist. Oh jeez, I almost asked her if she was a guy. Oh, that's a woman, huh? <laughs> I can't tell at all! Okay. The day I say something like that out loud is the day I get turned into a human meatball. But now I remember, she competed in a martial arts tournament in America and won, despite being a girl. She's the ultimate martial artist. She's fought in uh, over 400... Hundred matches and never lost a single one. <clears throat> Excuse me, hang on. I'm gonna mute the mic real quick. Okay, sorry about that. <clears> Thor <throat> is still uh, acting up a bit. That thread also said a bit more about her. Some call her Ogre. Some even think she's the closest known relative of to the primates, the famed missing link. Holy shit. Any incoming Hope's Peak students who are reading this, let me warn you right now. If you value your life, avoid her at all costs. Standing in front of her now, I don't think they were exaggerating about that. Boy. Hey, you. Oh, huh? yes. I snapped to attention without even realizing it. Then she started to poke and prod at my body. Um, what are you... Not of hook. Muscular quality and quantity is right around that of an extremely ordinary high school student. <laughs> huh, what a shame. You're not fit at all to act as my training partner. I'm not sure that's such a shame for me. Yeah, you probably don't want to say that too loud there, Makoto. Byak... Uh, Byakuya. Byakuya? Byakuya. He seems like he's a smooth operator. Ultimate affluent progen uh, progeny. Hi, uh, nice to meet you. That's the most half-assed, half-assed man. I'm <laughs> just getting totally, uh, totally terrible with reading this now. Most half-assed introduction I've ever heard. But there isn't really anything I can do about it. Even among the ultimate students, this one is special. Byakuya Togami. He's the heir uh, apparent of his family's massive financial conglomerate. He's already started managing business operations. His own personal assets are, well, vast. His ti uh, title of ultimate affluent progeny is completely accurate. He's the definition of exceptional. That's everything I learned about him from that Hope's Peak Academy thread online. Oi. We're done with introductions, right? How much longer are you going to stand there? Go away. I'm sick of looking at you. Azora says to me, you and I will never stand on the same level. Like a king in training. Alright, so uh, he's not going to be our friend. Uh, then we have Yasuhiro Hagakure. That is some hair. Ultimate Clairvoyant. Alright. Yasuhiro Hagakure, known as Supernova, 
in the psychic community, the trend-setting ultimate clairvoyant. Honestly, I don't really get all the fortune-telling stuff. It's pretty much beyond me. Still, I can't help wondering if there's any truth to it. <sighs> okay, I give up. Huh? What happened? <clears throat> I saw it. I looked right at it. Seriously, I totally saw it. Saw what? A guardian angel with a crazy perm chasing after Bigfoot running off with a skyfish in its mouth. And that guardian angel is your guardian angel. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. But hey, we should grab some uh, brewski sometime and get in real deep into Lemuria and its civilization. Hell yeah, bro. What? We're not allowed to drink. We're in high school. Daddy. Oh, I'm actually 21. I've been held back a few times and, well, it's a long story. A few times? Yeah, I bet that is a long story. And then we have Celeste. <laughs> Ultimate Gambler? Wow, that's not what I would have expected. Celestia Luden... huh? <laughs> Ludenberg? That's definitely a cultural difference that that's the name that tripped him up. It is my name, but if you don't mind, I would prefer for you to call me Celeste. Um, you are Japanese, right? Huh? Of course, why do you ask? If you don't mind, could you tell me your real name? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Celestia Lindenberg is my real name. But as I mentioned, I would much rather you call me Celeste. She's polite, but pretty forceful at the same time. I don't think she wants to say any more about it. I guess the rumors in that thread were right about her. The self-styled Celestia Lindenberg. She's the ultimate gambler who's never lost a bet. Other than her obvious love of gothic Lolita clothes, everything about her is wrapped in a veil of lies. They say she entered and won an underground gambling tournament, earning the title of Queen of Liars. She's totally cleaned out the other players, taking their life savings and laughing as she did it. <laughs> I look forward to getting to know you better. <laughs> that smile is beyond deceptive. I'd better watch myself around her. And with that, all the introductions are done. Hmm, even though they're all ultimate, they each have their own individual sort of, um, something. <laughs> okay, time to get down to business. This is no time to stand around making friends like a bunch of dull-eyed baboons. Oh, that's true. I think someone said something about a bigger problem or something. What was that about? Come on, dude. <laughs> well, you see... Makoto, you said a bunch of stuff happened and then you were just asleep, right? Well, the same is true for all of us. What? Seriously? Just after each of us got into the main hall, we lost consciousness. And when we came to, we were somewhere here in the school. That's what happened to you, right? But, but that's just... It's weird that every one of us would get knocked out like that. Exactly! That's why we're all freaking out! And that's not the only thing. You saw where all the windows in the classes and hallways were, right? But instead of normal glass windows, it was a bunch of big metal plates. What's that about? Plus, all my stuff's missing. Even my cell phone. Yeah, you're right. I haven't seen my PDA anywhere either. And then there's the main hall here. The front exit is completely blocked by some giant metal hatch. But there wasn't anything like that when I first got here. What the heck? What's it doing there? Maybe we got caught up in some kind of, like, you know, crime or something? What, like, a, a kidnapping? You think maybe someone grabbed us and hauled us off when we're not actually at school? Mama. Come on, don't think like that. Cheer up! I bet this is all just part of the school's orientation procedure. Yeah, Daddy. that makes sense. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. So I'm just gonna take it easy for a little bit. So oh, do you think they wanted to do something to surprise us? Well, if that's all it is, it's a nap time. It's nap time for me. I was up way too late last night, so I could use a little shut-eye. I could feel everyone's tension evaporating. But then, it began. A 
assume that's the bear, yeah. The voice seemed totally out of place. It was so playful, so completely unconcerned. I couldn't help but feel a deep, unnerving dread at the sound of it. It was like hearing someone laugh at the scene of an accident. <coughs> What the hell was that just now? Well then, if you'll excuse me. Hey! What, you're just gonna take off like that? Oh yeah, now I get it. This whole thing was just to get us all pumped for the entrance ceremony. <laughs> Man, thank god it was all a joke. I'd be totally freaked if this was real. Alright, guess I'll head out too. I wonder what they got planned for us next. Damn, I was totally looking forward to that nap too. Why oh, they have to go and kill the mood? Wait for me! I want to go with you! That is that then. I'll see you all there. Not that anyone cares, but I'm gonna go too. Everyone took off for the gym, but I was frozen where I stood. That uneasy feeling I'd had before, I couldn't get it out of my mind. And it looked like I wasn't the only one. This doesn't seem right. Yeah, that announcement was totally weird. Maybe. But just staying put does not mean we'll be safe. Besides, aren't you guys just a little bit curious to find out what's going on around here? Not of hope. If we do not move... <clears throat> If we do not move forward, we learn nothing. The only choice is to push ahead. I... I guess she's right. But still, I'm kinda... No, really nervous. We don't have a choice. We have to go. They said to go to the gym, right? Yes. And this is where we are going to uh, end the episode. Uh, since it does seem like checkpoints are going to be few and far between here. Uh, so yeah. As always, thank you guys very much for watching. I am intrigued, and uh, it seems like this is going to be a really awesome cast of characters. So, I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.